I was really hoping Barry was going to stay outside, but let's do this. Uh, so, uh, a very long sentence, um, and I usually explain things like this, so let's see how it goes. I also haven't slept, and this has been a long day, but uh, it's somewhat based on what I'm going to research for my master's this year at Rhodes. Um, and it's partly around something called that and that. So who am I? Uh, I've got a, a little uh, figurine now. Uh, a lot of people hack it all. A lot of people call me Goose, so call me Goose. Uh, in the day, I work in an insure tech startup. Uh, it hasn't launched yet. I did the production infrastructure yesterday before B-Side, so let's hope that works. Uh, I'm also part of OWASP Cape Town and B-Sides. You probably saw me around today. I wore this crazy shirt so everyone could spot me if there was a problem. Um, so, or um, it's payback for me calling someone the DevOps Casper de Vries at DevOps days. So, um, it's all pretty much around sandboxing. So we've seen uh, in late, uh, if ever we had a question whether or not Docker was for security, we've got a couple of answers the last couple of years. Uh, here's some examples. Uh, Monero miners running in Docker containers. I literally talked to someone at DevOps days who said he knows someone who runs a Kubernetes cluster with 15% of the resources running Monero, and no one's ever noticed it. Um, uh, I don't know how that works in your KPIs when you're doing your job uh, review, but hey. Um, so we still have a lot of problems with running code in Docker. People actually download MySQL. That's not the official one. Run all kinds of crap. And um, generally what we used to do is run a whole VM and abstract everything in the cloud on our own machines in a data center. But then we realized that it's somewhat inefficient and we want to squeeze more out of our applications. As we see with Intel, uh, speed is everything. Um, and then we started looking like this, so uh, much easier to get to the kernel. All the applications are just side by side, horizontally. Um, so we kind of see this kind of thing where more and more people are looking to either hit uh, the middleware, so like the Docker um, daemon itself, by TCP, uh, finding vulnerabilities in Golang itself, Docker, or the application. And this is especially relevant in multi-tenancy environments uh, that we're seeing popping up a lot, like this one, that beautiful word we all love, serverless, which just means actually something like this. Uh, so Apache has a project called OpenWhisk, and it gives you an idea of what it would actually mean to build serverless, is you schedule things to run, and a whole bunch of stuff in the background, like console and Kafka, make it run uh, on Docker hosts. Uh, you can spin up multiple machines, uh, multiple Docker instances, and fill up as much as you want uh, until you run out of resources. So what we tend to see, especially in AWS, is you'll end up with your application and someone else's application running side by side, um, which is a new and interesting problem for us to solve. So enter GVisor and Gophers, because it's DevOps and everyone loves Golang. Um, so GVisor uh, is a statically compiled Golang binary, um, which you can add into your Docker settings. So when the daemon starts, it has an additional runtime that adds a shim in between the application and the host kernel, so a little VM a mini VM, so we're back to wasting some resources, but we're protecting the host kernel um, by limiting the syscalls and also networking calls. So uh, part of this would actually be protecting the Docker daemon um, itself. Um, it has two little processes that run, um, and it proxies syscalls down to the host kernel. Uh, it has limited system calls, I'll get to that later. <laughs> and it also limits the networking and you're actually able to set uh, it to debug and see the actual calls going on. 
Um, and how I came across this in the first place is that Google released Python 3.7 for um, Google Cloud recently, and they built Gvisor to help them actually isolate the host kernel. Obviously, Python doesn't have its own sandbox, so they wanted to sandbox Python code or any code, uh, really, and then they released this with the Python 3.7 um, news. Um, and it implements about 200 of the 400 x86 Linux calls. Well, what I mean is uh, they focused on x86. It's obviously for servers. Um, acts as a file system proxy. Um, it breaks things up into separate namespaces. Uh, it has its own network stack written in Go. And it also actually allows network pass-through. So if you want to go past all their implementation. Um, and adding it to Docker is pretty much as simple as adding a runtime and then when you run the Docker container, telling it which runtime to use. Um, and it's a single binary, like I've said, just make sure that you've got the log directories and the right permissions for it to run. Um, so what, what's great about this is they've actually made it super easy, even if you have to tell your uh, glass-eyed developers that they have to do one more extra thing. Um, it's not too, too hard to implement that. Um, why am I actually talking about this is that we have new things like Kubernetes and you could run multi-tenancy on that. So they're busy building more of Gvisor to actually support Kubernetes. So their own version of it already protects their stack, but there's still some limitations. So it is a work in progress. Um, and part of why this is a problem and needs to be solved is much of the um, service side of things with Kubernetes um, where uh, we want to protect pods and also protect the overall system from being um, attacked by a malicious container. Um, especially if you look at this, it, it kind of explains quite well the general thought you've got an API server, a key value store, a scheduler, and a controller, um, and at the end, a user. So you might have multiple users running their own containers across multiple machines. So you kind of need to start thinking about the security, especially if it's multi-tenancy. So to some extent, what I want to look at is uh, applying sandboxing and monitoring within a container, and then look at Kubernetes and applying some of the zero trust uh, concepts to locking down uh, a user and certain containers um, with anomalies. Um, so kind of just using the idea of an access control engine and an access proxy in uh, Beyond Corp and start limiting the, the container and the user based on inference or uh, anomaly detection. So, I mean, we're ru un running untrusted code, so we're already in a difficult environment, but we keep locking down um, the access as we go. So, it's still kind of a work in progress on Kubernetes itself, but I want to focus on Gvisor and the container itself and then see if we can build uh, rules and uh, apply kind of zero trust uh, limitations to the user as we see more and more anomalous behavior. Um, and why I think it is possible that this could work is that Gvisor already supports all of that. Um, so they've actually built tests and they've run all of this and found that all the syscalls match up. You'll see PostgreSQL actually isn't here because it does some um, um, magic with process IDs that they don't like, um, but potentially we can use these applications and runtimes to create kind of a, a baseline to then find anomalies uh, based of that. Um, and um, people have already started looking at sandboxing malware with Gvisor. Uh, it also allows checkpointing and restoring so that you can look at a container later on. Um, and this company started working on Honeytrap to build a honeypot with Gvisor and Docker, potentially Kubernetes. And that's pretty much that. That felt very crazy. 
but I hope that was interesting. And part of this is so that you can come and ask me questions or tell me if I'm crazy. Um, I think Barry already thinks I'm crazy, but they'll knock a thesis out of me. But I would love some insight from everybody. And that's pretty much it. Questions? Just one comment on the AWS side. Um, the multi-tenancy uh, for the serverless stuff, um, separation is provided between customers um, by virtualization. So it's not just multiple containers from different customers running on the same box. Um, you never have two customers' containers running on the same instance in the background. Um, that's always separated on, on different instances. Um, in fact, this week um, we've publicly released um, Firecracker, um, a VM system that we're actually using internally, um, which is pretty sweet, pretty thin, um, that anybody can actually run. It's, yeah, it's pretty cool. But this is very cool. Uh, maybe to add to that, initially wh why I thought of this was to actually look at uh, supply chain um, and monitor new code and dependencies in sandboxes before it actually went out. So multi-tenancy I looked at because it might be easier to find data on it than supply chain, which is usually quite a protected thing in a company. But um, I have actually looked at Firecracker quickly. It's KVM with some shim. Give me a second. Uh, also, just to add to that, um, uh, Firecracker, uh, we just recently released that. Um, yeah, I'd recommend it. Uh, so my question is, um, if I'm not misunderstanding something, what is the advantage of GVisor over just traditional um, using like control groups um, that the kernel provides for um, like kernel space isolation. Um, uh, yeah, is it, I don't know, is it because of like the syscalls or, yeah? Uh, it's mostly around the syscalls and the ability to terminate a running container uh, within some of those syscalls. Um, there's still a little very little written about it, like it's their internal documentation, but it's mostly around limiting syscalls and proxying them in a way to protect the kernel a bit better and namespacing things so that everything's not running in the same namespace, uh, which by default a lot of people tend to do. Does that answer your question? Oh, and the network side of things as well. They've isolated some of it, so a couple of vulnerabilities with Docker were found around the TCP daemon. So you need to protect the, the containers and the actual Docker daemon. And then um, I think a lot of it's around Kubernetes as well to try and protect the API as well.